This Use a Play is brought to you by... This is a 6 p.m. Barbados Today update for Thursday, June 26, 2014. I'm Kemar Jordan. Good evening. At this hour, we're hearing that another prisoner is set to get a new lease on life. Barbados Today has learned that after more than 18 years behind bars, Arlie James will walk out of Dodds next week. James was convicted of the 1994 murder of his wife, Deborah James. He was sentenced to death for the crime. But in 1997, the British Privy Council heard his appeal, and two years later, it quashed the murder conviction to a lesser charge of manslaughter and set aside the death sentence. The news comes swiftly on the heels of this morning's release of two other prisoners, Peter Ford and Orlando Lord, made their walk to freedom after serving 15 years behind bars. The families of the men are still celebrating their release. Meantime, a man is in police custody at this hour, assisting with investigations into a shooting incident which occurred on the Jolly Roger cruise last night. 23-year-old Rashidi Branch of Eden Lodge St. Michael received a gunshot wound to his abdomen. Following the incident, the boat was reportedly escorted to the wharf road by members of the Barbados Coast Guard, and Branch was transported to the QEH by ambulance, where he's being treated. Investigations are continuing. In other news, it will not be business as usual at the Barbados Community College, so says the Senior Industrial Relations Officer of the National Union of Public Workers, Wayne Waldron, as the BCC workers downed tools this morning to protest late payment of salaries. The NUPW spokesman says workers are frustrated that their plight is not being taken seriously, despite continuous talks with the necessary officials. We will get the assurance that they will move expeditiously to deal with delays, but we still think despite our communication that there's an unsettling um, situation where we are concerned with the constant, the extent to which salaries are delayed and the number of persons involved in terms of temporary officers. Um, we have people three, six months um, who have not been paid. And one sometimes wonder when these matters are raised um, that there's a complaint that there's not that sense of urgency to ensure that it's rectified. A Barbadian educator is urging young people to rid themselves of the slave mentality in order to move forward in life. MacDonald Fingal, we know him popularly as Mac Fingal, made this plea today as he addressed the graduation ceremony of the Chalky Mount Primary School. Fingal told the students there are several ingredients that could contribute to a bright future as they moved on to another level of their academic life. But he complained they first had a major hurdle to overcome in order to accomplish that goal. When it's at the top, these people is getting nervous. You know who's getting nervous? Not white people, black people. You always get scared. Scared for what? I'm just telling you. You see, because this was indoctrinated in us. It didn't just happen. It happened by design, as you can see from the speech. It happened by design. Therefore, it will not go in by its own. It has to go in by design. So how are we going to get to go away? When you're 34, 40 years old, it's too ingrained in you. These are the people that I got to talk to this morning. Three years, four years old, five years old, and show them that things can change. Make them understand it's okay for a black man to be rich. It's okay for a black man to be in charge. Let them know black people be proud of us. Sport now. Blackman and Gallup are the queens of primary school netball. 
Today at the Garfield Sober Sports Complex, they defeated St. Giles Primary 2013 to capture the 2014 Primary Schools Netball Championship title. Blackman and Gallup, which had fielded an A and B team in the tournament, owed their victory to an excellent shooting spell by goal shoot Dajnisha Davis and goal attack to Shana Payne. Davis had 12 goals from 14 attempts and Payne chipped in with 8 goals from 9 attempts. Congrats to the girls there. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bike. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. To news from around the region, the mosquito-borne chicken gunia virus is spiraling out of control in St. Lucia. According to Dr. Michel Francois, a surveillance officer at the Epidemiology Center, the disease, which is spread by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, has now affected people in all 17 constituencies. Francois did not give numbers, but she says there are more cases in the communities than what is being reported at the hospitals and health centers. Caribbean-wise, chikungunya has affected more than 183,000 people to date. On the international scene, the World Health Organization is tonight urging African authorities to take drastic action to stem the spread of the deadly Ebola virus. Nearly 400 people have died in an outbreak which started in Guinea four months ago and spread to neighboring Sierra Leone and Liberia. The WHO says it's gravely concerned that the outbreak, which is the largest in terms of cases of deaths and by geographical area, has the potential to spread internationally. There's no vaccine for Ebola, which spreads through close human contact. And that's our 6 p.m. update. Be sure to join us first thing tomorrow morning. That's when Emmanuel Joseph will bring us our next update. Until then, you can log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper or like us on Facebook to get more news and sports. I'm Kmar Jordan. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. This news update is brought to you by...